In this video, I attempt to ream the tailstock in my Monarch lathe and clean it up to factory perfection. And it doesn't work. But hey, I can sharpen reamers now. All right, this is what I'm working with, a brand new old stock Morris Taper 4 reamer. That actually looks really good. Let's see how straight we are. A little bit of wiggle, that's all right. We're pretty well lined up. I think that will do everything that I want it to. Let's lock down the tailstock. Let's try a bit more pressure and a bit more oil. Let's go full, full pressure on the spring, see what happens. Damn it. Ugh. What I have here is I've taken some dye chem. I put it on a reasonably clean MT4 shank and let's see what happens yeah let's see about that let's shove it in again oops and one more time right here looks like there's some rubbing still actually that's I just found this. What do you think the chances are that these are brand new? Well, never used, let's say that. I see much with rubbing. Maybe right there though. I think there are still some spots on this that are rubbing. Let's spin it a little bit here. Yeah, look at right there. There's still a spot that I haven't gotten to yet. Turns out the tailstock is hardened. Well, that's what a reamer looks like if you try to use it on a hardened tailstock.
Well, this is not going at all like I planned. So far, all I've managed to do is trash the edge on a brand new tapered reamer. I think to help myself feel better, I'm going to spend the rest of this video trying to sharpen that reamer. I guess that means if all goes well, I'm going to end this video exactly where I started it, with a sharp reamer. In order to sharpen the reamer, I need a way to correctly index the 10 flutes for sharpening. Now, I have an air bearing that is used for sharpening end mills. I think I can make that work. So I'm going to start by making a new index plate for it that has 10 indexes. The one that it currently has, has 12. When I first got this lathe, I found the 18 inch four jaw chuck really intimidating. But in this case, it actually worked really well and I enjoyed using it. For boring larger holes, all I have is this indexable end mill. And it leaves a very clean finish, but makes some really gnarly shavings. The indexing plate isn't yet final size, but it's very close. So I'm going to set it up on the semi-indexing head and start drilling some holes. First, I need to drill and tap a hole so a set screw can secure this indexing plate to the air spindle. The tap is started with the mill, then I'll finish tapping by hand that way I can relieve the chips and I don't risk breaking the tap since this is a pretty deep hole. And then a quick deburring and this hole is done. Using only the finest copper from the local hardware store plumbing department, I am making some soft faces to protect the finished edge on my part. I'm a little nervous since this is the first time that I'm using this indexing head for a finished part. So I'm going to use a marker to plot things out to make sure that I'm drilling the holes in exactly the right spot. I'll start with a center drill and then use a drill bit and finally chamfer it, finishing a nice hole for the detent pin to center in. Next, I stamp some numbers next to each of the detent holes. And test it out. Took a bit of a break and I came back tonight and I milled it down a final size. So now it is almost identical to the one I'm copying. Looking good. Okay. I'm going to... Uh get my parts prepped and blue them. I have a bit of acetone in that bottle. Just gonna wipe everything down. Make sure there's no grease or oil and that these parts are clean. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. I'm just going to go scrub this. I have a little scrubbing pad in the sink. Be right back. I did a second coat on this one and it, it's looking really nice and uniform. You see this one, a little blotchy right now. Let's put another application and see what happens. It's looking a lot better. It looks really good. It looks factory, and if not for the unpronounceable name stamped on it, 
you might think it was factory. All right, I am setting up to sharpen this tapered reamer. And so far what I've done, I've used one of these to balance on the flute and then eyeball it to make sure that it is level with how the wheel is gonna grind. That was the easy part. The next thing I've been trying to do is indicate the flute. Let me crank the table here. You can see that's pretty good. But what's interesting is when we unlock the index and spin it, you can see the different flutes. You'll notice I'm not perfectly centered. I thought about this for quite a while. Why aren't all the flutes at the same angle? And of course, that's because there is run out. Or is there? The way this reamer was manufactured is it was ground between centers. If those centers are not perfectly concentric with the shank, then the flutes are never going to line up the way I'm holding it. As long as I get one of the flutes lined up, I can dial in that angle and I will grind all the rest of them to that same angle. So really, line up one of the flutes and grind away. Here we are again. Let's take a look at how the reamer looks. So you can see it's, it looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna put a little test fit and see if it is actually matching the taper here. So we're gonna go real light and then twist it like it would cut. There's a lot of grabbing going on. Okay. Looks pretty good. I know I just sharpened it. What the heck am I doing? Oh. We're just going to uh, mess with it because apparently I know how to sharpen it. What could go wrong? All right, now here we are looking at failure. You can see It's like all that's cut rubbing is the, the cutting surface. But yeah, it is definitely not cutting. Just went and did a quick sharpening, put it back in the collet. I didn't index or indicate anything and then, uh, yeah, perfect. Sharpened right up. I do wish the tailstock would have went better, but I guess one big failure followed by a bunch of little wins, maybe medium sized wins is okay. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.